I've had a few people ask me how my fast went and it got broke, but I did get 36 hours in. Uh, I always try and make sure that the timing of my fasts includes one full daylight period. In other words, I get two full sleeps in without um, food on the stomach, uh, especially in that second sleep. That's when the magic happens. For me, I can visually see it in my psoriasis. It makes a lot of difference. Uh, last year, I think I got up to 70 some hours in a fast and yeah. Okay, let's get into it a little bit tighter. One thing you have to understand when I'm talking to some of you about ketosis and such, it does take time for the liver to start uh, functioning in a way that it never has before. Uh, it has never gone through a ancestral cycle of winter. And so you can find yourself um, fighting with getting into ketosis and staying there, uh, even when you're eating the correct uh, nutritional therapy. I don't, I've got to stay away from the word diet for a while. Um, I have been doing this long enough now, and it probably took me a better part of a year of doing various things like fasting, being in a uh, high fat diet. Um, and by the way, that whole cholesterol dynamic was really, really, really bad science. Uh, it doesn't fly with what nature tells us and you can't argue with mother nature. You can't. Um, but anyway, my liver will switch over very easy. As an example, uh, I've dropped out of ketosis here this week. Very, very minor. It was very, very minor ketones. Um, but within about oh, another eight hours and I was making good ketones. So again, the liver has to have time to understand how to switch back and forth and understand that you are doing this and so there's a necessity to it. I know it sounds like there's a brain involved. Well, there is. And that's called the brain gut axis. And the brain gut axis is that super highway called your vagus nerve. And there is a lot of communication that goes on between the vagus nerve and the brain. Uh, as an example, when you're sleeping, um, your bladder and your kidneys are going to go into a slow motion uh, period because you don't want to be getting up and having to go pee constantly. Uh, but once you get that trigger, then the bladder will start its job before you wake in the morning, but it's ready to be evacuated early in the morning. I'm getting off topic here. <laughs> but suffice to say is that uh, ketosis is, is fairly easy to do. And as the ladies will tell you, um, because of their monthly cycle and everything, a fast is much, much easier to do to get themselves into ketosis than it is to slowly go from a high fat diet and, you know, needing that two weeks to transition into ketosis. Um, a straight out and out fast will get them there quicker. And then most should be dropping out. Um, uh, eh, shouldn't be, the word shouldn't be should. Uh, the word should be, they can't. <laughs> they just struggle with it too hard, guys. And it's, it's not worth the time and the effort uh, to worry about it if the lady's cycle is such that ketosis and fasting and stuff is just too hard mentally or too hard physically um, to get to that point. But again, as I mentioned earlier, once your liver is used to turning over and clicking, it has no problem with doing it, even with the ladies. There you go. A lot of shotgun stuff, guys. I know we're not talking about the Philippines a little bit here, but got to get broader based on what we're talking about. And I've been following Justin Cormack on, on YouTube, uh, Critter Hunter. He's got a dive outlet in uh, uh, Dumaguete, I believe, maybe just north of it, somewhere. Anyway, he's got a dive outlet there now. Um, and uh, of course, he's been losing huge amounts of weight, uh, but he goes through also his cycles of struggling with trying to stay in ketosis because more of it is that sugar drive upstairs that is never going to go away. And you know, once an addict, always an addict. Later Gators. <laughs>